Let's begin! Ones is a one-on-one -on -one online spell battle game. Each battle takes place in a pretty small arena and has each player teleporting from location to location. The game can be played with a DualShock controller or two move controllers, and both playstyles can be played from a seated position. The DualShock is ever so slightly the better option though, as aiming is tied to wherever you're looking at rather than you having to point your wand like you do when you're playing with the moves. As this game is very competitive, you want your reaction times to be as fast fast as possible. The DualShock's button layout, along with how you aim, just allows you to be that tiny bit faster. It's visually a bit of a shame, considering you don't actually see your wand when using the DualShock, but luckily, the game is still a lot of fun when played with it. There is only snap turning, but it's not really an issue due to the map's layouts. The main issue with the snap turning comes when you're in the menus, as the teleportation spots don't spawn you directly facing each of the stations. It's not an issue if you stand though, as you can simply turn your body. Your wand can hold four different spells. There is 25 to choose from, and each one can be unlocked in any order as long as you have enough points. The variety in spells here is really what makes this game so much fun to play. You get some that you can simply shoot towards your opponent, such as a fireball or a missile. Other spells form a shield in front of you or around you, which can also reflect incoming spells back towards the other player. There are also trap spells that can be placed down on a teleportation spot, such as poison or spikes that shoot up from the ground. Round. Totem spells will spawn something that fights along your side, and there are also spells for tricking the enemy, such as one that shoots a spell from a skull's head from a different location, and another that allows you to spawn a couple of decoys of yourself around the map. There is just so many spells to choose from here, and although a bunch of them can be thrown into a certain category, such as the trap types, each spell does play quite a bit differently from one another. Like the missile spell, that can be used to send one ball out, or if the casting button is held down, it will charge up and then fire three balls at the same time. There is a lot of experimentation to be had here, and when you come across another player who is using a spell very effectively against you, that you haven't tried yet, it just encourages you to keep on playing so that you can unlock it for your own wand. You really are completely free to make your own playstyle in this game, and the more you practice with your own spell set, the better you get, and you can also find some quite cool ways to get the upper hand on your opponent. One of my favourite ways to play was to set off a decoy which spawned another two versions of myself to confuse my opponent. These decoys don't cast spells or move though, so I stay still in the game too. I would then spawn poison gas around the map to limit the other player's movement, and then attack when they wasn't looking in my direction. This trickster-like playstyle may come across as overpowered, but that's the best bit about this game. There is always a spell that can put the fight back in your opponent's favour. In this case, a homing spell, as it would travel in my direction, even if I was hiding behind a wall. This allowed the other player to tell the difference between me and the decoys. Honestly, there is so many different playstyles you could make up in this game. You could certainly centre a very long video around them. A combination of spells that work well together really can give you a massive advantage, but you do have to take into consideration how much mana each one costs. Your mana recharges over time, and it also gets depleted slightly when you teleport. This forces you to constantly think about what space you should spawn to next, and whether or not it is worth doing so. It's actually a very fast-paced game that not only requires quick real-world movements when aiming, but also sharp thinking. Even with the lack of free movement here, the overall speed of the battles is pretty intense and very engaging. There are six maps to play on. Some allow you to sneak around your enemy, and some allow you to confine them in small areas with a couple of well-placed trap spells. Your positioning is very important, especially as health pickups and mana restoration points can be found. I did face a problem with the teleportation though. Every so often, I would spawn just outside of the teleportation spot, which prevented me from being able to cast a spell or move. Holding the recenter button put me back into the right position, but considering the game's fast-paced nature, it was a very unwelcomed pause. It's odd, because it happened whilst I was playing seated, so it wasn't actually me moving from outside my play area. The maps also contain unique events too. Trains will pass by in one map that carry a power-up, 
that allows you to teleport for free momentarily, and in another, sections of the map will slowly open up thanks to doors unlocking. This creates a race to get inside first, thanks to the health pickups already being spawned in there, and if you don't get inside quick enough, a massive sandstorm will get you. These extra events are great, as they change up the way you approach each level a little bit. There is also a single player mode, which allows you to go up against an AI opponent, but it's not really to be taken seriously, as the AI here is pretty poor. It's just best to use this mode as a testing area for your combination of spells. This really is a multiplayer focused game, and the game does encourage you to keep on dueling too, thanks to some unlockables. At the end of each match you are presented a screen that shows your results. The better you did, the more XP you receive. Each time you do level up, you receive a point to unlock a new spell with, and you also receive some dust, which can be spent on cosmetics. You can buy new ones, which have pretty unique names and designs, and you can also unlock new people to play as. Unlockables are not the only reason to keep on playing though, as there is a seasonal leaderboard running. The cool thing about each season is the fact that the top 10 players will receive a new one to use. There are also events that run during a certain period of time, which will reward the top players a relic dust reward. It's great to see competitive extras like these in multiplayer games games, as it really does show that the developers care about having a healthy online community, even after the game's initial release. Unfortunately though, the trophy list is quite lacking, and I mainly say this because it doesn't come with a platinum. The simple trophies include completing the tutorial, winning 25 duels, and also winning a game on each map. The most time consuming ones are for unlocking all the unlockables, and also for reaching player level 100. These will take a long time to do, so it's a real shame that you're not rewarded with a platinum for your effort, especially as other elements of the game do encourage you to keep playing. This game did also release on the Oculus Go, so when you first start playing, it can certainly feel like a game that has been designed around limited hardware, especially with the lack of free movement. But the more you play, the more you realise that the game is very fast paced, even with it only having teleportation. The visuals don't take a hit either, the maps look great and the spell effects shine and pop out. At first, some spells can seem a bit overpowered, but a lot of thought and effort has gone into each spell's advantages and disadvantages. So when it comes to picking your own playstyle, you really do have so many options. And this is where the game really is at its best. It's not only an action packed game, but also one that requires quick tactical thinking. It's a very fun online competitive game. Although there hasn't been that many videos on the channel recently, that doesn't mean I haven't been working on PSVR World. I have a couple of new things coming to the channel soon, which have taken quite a bit of time to prepare, so be sure to keep an eye out for them. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more PSVR content.